hey y'all it's timidity i got an afro today and also a very cute outfit but you can't see the outfit i'm sorry i'm tired and i need to rest my arm on this fucking pillow that i got gifted by a lovely um youtube subscriber shout out to you who then promptly creeped me out but it's okay well no it's not don't do that again if a girl says several times that she's not looking to date no matter if you got her something off of her wish list or not and i said it four times the worst thing you can do is decide to go hmm I'm going to ask her a fifth time. <laughs> anyway, I was about to say, I think God keeps sending me life lessons instead of life partners. Like, I'm not saying that I, like, I'm totally innocent in the, like, I've told y'all multiple times, I need to stop dating. I need to focus on myself. I need to recoup, lock in, get it the fuck together. There's more things to focus about in my life than a man. Any anger I have towards men, I could be focusing on my employer this section of my life that section of my life i don't have to think about like this nigga who ain't text me back or that nigga who didn't want to like have a relationship with me or this guy who's just kind of wishy-washy and mentally unstable but i knew he was mentally unstable and lustful you know like it's like there's bigger fish to fry i'm not totally innocent because i know that but then guess what i still deleted bumble i was like i'm not gonna get on bumble anymore and talk to these dudes i don't care how much money they got i don't care how successful they are i'm not risking it because dating has been the fucking trenches like, that guy who I thought was a fucking dreamboat, Riley, and then I had to wake up the next morning to fucking fist to the fucking nose because he wanted to lie and say the girl he's only been separated with for a few fucking weeks, he was separated for half a fucking year because he wanted to keep me around instead of being normal and rational. Oh my god. Maybe I am kind of cursed. Someone actually did joke to me. They said to me, your love life and your life in general, it seems like you have, like, extreme luck in your general life. And then your love life, it's like somehow you roll a negative one, but in every other place you have like stats 20. And it's like, yeah, that fits. It's like my life is actually incredibly well, all things considered. Like a lot of blessings are still here. I'm grateful. But when it comes to love, it's like, it's like, hey, to me, I know you just got of an abusive relationship with your ex, Jared, who fucked up your own autonomy and voice and stuff. But guess what? Here's a new relationship with a guy who's a life lesson. He's going to teach you not to be shy about asking for what you want and to always leave the second you detect some weird shit because they will drag you through hell. And whenever you get a small hint that a man is in some type of way on the first date, it's usually 10 times worse, 100 times worse, 1,000 times worse than you can fucking imagine. That's why I got in a fight with him. And then the other guy, I remember that guy, Ryan, the very next guy, he was like, ooh, yeah, I'm demisexual. I have to really make sure I get to know somebody, blah, 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 for work. And then guess what? First fucking date, he was grabbing ass, tongue kissing and all that. But I thought it was fun. I was like, okay, you know what? We did have a blast tonight. Maybe somehow he's connected to me well, despite not much talking. Let's just say the second date he, the second date he had his dick out in public. So, uh, and it's like, ooh, moved on from that guy and it's just like the next date i had we went to fucking gary danko don't ask me i like to keep these stickers just in case bitches are like you never went to gary danko yes i did bitch i have the fucking sticker to prove it we went to that fancy ass restaurant which also we see why it lost its michelin star he knew i don't drink and especially on a first date never drink on a first date ever it's stupid or like there's been a few rare times but that's only when i was like 100 percent sure of my safety but even then i watched the fuck out of my drinks hardly ever drink on a first date because i think it's stupid why would i want to risk fucking something up this guy on the other hand he knew i wasn't going to be drinking all night and he was like oh okay that's great that's great that's good for your body and then next thing you know four glasses of wine four fucking and counting um what are martinis and shit it's like and he got so sloppy drunk and rude and he tried to uber me home and it was just like he accidentally ubered me to his house and no it wasn't him trying to make a sexual move on me because he got separate rides he was that wasted that he kept ca calling rides and then canceling them going wait what did i just do oh and then calling them again and canceling over and over and over so uh but I'll put it to you like this. I actually am very open about the fact that I am celibate and that I don't date and my standards. But I know sometimes God wants to send you tests to see if you're like faithful and strong in your mission. And if you don't believe in God, then okay, the universe wants to test you to make sure you actually want what you want and won't settle for less. To make sure you're still smart and stuff. I get it. Let's just say... There's this really popular guy in my area, a huge following, and he's pretty attractive, pretty fun, pretty interesting, extremely fuckboyish. Let's just say 
I um, I was like, this guy seems to have a lot in common with me and he seems really nice, but he was showing signs that he was very much the, ooh, I see you like high-end restaurants. I'm not doing that for a first date. I'm taking you somewhere local. Small businesses that I support. And like trying, and then like he was selfish. Like he was always talking about himself. And also he was saying some not so great stuff about the women he was seeing and showing me their photos and shit. And it's like, just layers just layers upon layers that this dude was an asshole but a part of me was just like i did want a friend that was my main intention but i couldn't help but also be like hey you know what this guy does have some nice eyes and some cute lips and he is tall i could be open for like a date but 100 percent nothing would happen between us but he was still very much leading in the direction of hoping that we could be fuck buddies or something fuck no anyway to make a very long story short let's just say i crashed out and then i me crashing out actually resulted in multiple women reaching out to me to be like holy shit you talked to him i talked to him he was talking to me at the same time yeah he wouldn't stop t he only talked about himself he was selfish he was rude he like oh he's just going for all the neurodivergent or emotionally unstable chicks that he can and so it's like okay i like i was pissed off but i was like you know what charge it to the game i can at least say that even though it took me a while to dodge that red flag even though it took me a while, and I did crash out in the process twice, almost three times, maybe four times, <laughs> I still left. And I didn't have that man's tongue or lips or anything near my body. I don't get to be someone he can brag about to his other girls he's trying to impress or fuck. And I get to cut him off. I feel a lot better today, actually, because today's been such a wonderful day. But then again, I can also factor in that I did go on a date today, which is not, a, it's like, I understand, I'm self-aware that sometimes my coping mechanism is to go on a date, because guess what? It just fucking works. Like, when I left my abusive ex, Jared, and, he, like, I remember I was depressed as fuck, like, God, what am I going to do on 4th of July, because my plans with him, like, obviously aren't going to happen anymore, and, oh my God, my family's going to be happy without me. What can I do? I could go on a date with this older dude who's, like, hardly interested in conversation and we could go to this fancy restaurant i guess and that would have it's a quick fix solution basically because even if a date goes well you still get to try new food meet new people have some solid conversation or at bare minimum have a bad story out of it and then luckily this wonderful guy i don't know if he still watches my page if you do hi stop stalking me online you could just text me like a normal person his name, let's call him Dev, because that was his fucking name. But it's a nickname, so let's pretend, even though there's only, like, one other name that a man can have, that, like, his name was Devin, but I, it's like, shut the fuck up. Okay, sorry, I wasn't trying to say his full name, but then in hindsight, it's like, if you call him Dev, most people would know his name is Devin. What other male name starts with Dev and ends with something else, you know? Anyway, Devin was a sweetie. He hit me up. He was like, hey, what are your plans for 4th of July? I said, oh, I'm just gonna go out to dinner with this one guy over at this fancy restaurant he's like what's it gonna take for you to cancel those plans and go with me instead i knew that was unhinged i still went and i had an absolute fucking blast i was so euphorically happy he showed me cool projects he was working on we got to like ha hang out by the sunset in the water and just sunbathe and splash around and shotgun ipas and shit and my ex saw that and he seethed in anger and sometimes it's just the best get back. Like, hell, when I got out of another abusive relationship, which I, I, I gotta stop getting in relationships. Well, I gotta stop dating. I gotta stop dating. No, don't date until you're healthy. Please. Some people will tell you, oh, no, you don't have to be perfectly healed. I do, bitch. I crash out. I text people bad shit. I know things about them that they have never told me. I'm not a healthy person. I'm self-aware of that. I'm someone who's been threatened with multiple restraining orders. None of them have ever gone through because one, the guys were fucking idiots. Two, I haven't done nothing they could prove. It's a long story. Let's just say, but for the most part, these guys would tell you, we know Tania just has really bad mental illnesses and we hope she gets the therapy and help she needs. We just also want to just like ideally never see her again or at least not for like one to three years and hopefully she's healthier by then. So, like, even though no restraining orders have been placed, I still do a healthy thing in distance. Oh no, my chicken's going cold. So I had to ish intermission real quick just to eat the fuck out of some of the TV dinner in front of me. Now, what I was gonna say, and I might have to turn on the light soon, obviously, because it's dark in here, is that it's nice. Sorry. Yeah, I just want better experiences, but it's kind of shitty because then you can even be vocal as fuck. Like, I am celibate. This is what I accept in a person. This is what I date in a person. And then you could even have, like, someone will see you wearing 
a diamond tennis bracelet, a diamond ring, a Christian Dior necklace. Always looking cute. Always going to the best, most exclusive fucking restaurants. Always doing the absolute best fucking things ever. Living life. They know that you date financial analysts, CEOs, software engineers, that you date the best of the best. Men who are polite, well-groomed, sweet. They know you like men who open car doors. They know you like men who show up to a date smelling good and putting an effort into their looks. They know what you like. And it just frustrates me that some people can still just truly go, hmm, I'm going to try my luck and see if she's stupid. And that's kind of frustrating, but I don't know. It's like... Maybe I wouldn't be so mad at it if I wasn't trying falling for it sometimes. Sometimes I have. And then I crash out over them. And it's like, you wouldn't need to do that if you just recognize that. Like, the dude who's, like, super social media famous in my area, he pops pills. He has all those fuck buddies in rotation. He does this, he does that. But I was still foolish enough to almost go, you know what? He has great potential and I think we have great connection. No, the f But then I was aware enough. Where even though I overlooked way too much bad shit that I'm not even going to tell you, I'm embarrassed over it. Like the rare moment where I have shame, imagine that. Huh. I felt so fucking, like, I just kind of realized he only talks about himself. And I, I tried to be rational at first. I was like, okay, maybe he's not talking about me much because he doesn't think I have many interesting stories. I told more stories about myself, he would just, like, ignore it and then just go back to talking about whatever he wanted to talk about. And he knew specifically that was the thing I hated. Anyway, let's just say that would, if he didn't do that, I probably would have had some sort of fucked up toxic situationship with this dude who was actually w talking to way more women than he was letting on with me. And then as for, like, that's kind of scary to think about. So I should be grateful that he fucked things up in the way he did. Sometimes you have to be grateful because things could have gone worse. Like if Jared didn't have that, the fuck ups he had, then I probably would have, there's some alternate universe where I could have been married to him. And had his kid and then would have had faced something 30 million times worse than just the traumatic like times I had with him all together in this timeline if that makes sense I would have went through absolute fucking hell like sure it doesn't feel great all that happened right like you know getting molly whopped by Wiley's ex that wasn't very fun but you know what would have sucked worse if I had dated him and learned about his like lying and scheming and cowardly personality type and his bullshit narcissistic urges way too late and it is good that i crashed out because with me crashing out multiple women were like holy shit i know not to talk to this guy anymore holy shit he's doing what and saying what about me and who about me and then like yeah so multiple people came out to me and were like yeah this dude's a massive fucking cunt but absolutely thank you for letting me know and you're not crazy for like recognizing those traits in him i should have recognized them sooner but i at least am glad that i left when i did and maybe it was good that i crashed out when i did because otherwise these women would have not known themselves so i don't know maybe if we want to get super mega spiritual with it we could say something like "Ooh, maybe i was destined to meet this dude who i thought i had a bunch in common with personality wise and life wise and you know he did inspire me to get back into writing again which is wonderful i'm still grateful about certain highs and lows with him but yeah also it made me realize okay i'm investing more love into like trying to fix a man to distract myself from my own shitty life because if i couldn't feel accomplished fixing someone else's life and trying to get this dude to stop being a pill popping asshole then i will feel better about my own even if i don't inhale like it's like more work but less work in my mind because it's like if i get to save this nigga I get to feel accomplished. So no matter how fucked up my life is, it's okay because I help that person's life. Wrong. You're going to fuck up your life in more ways than one if you do that. Don't be like me. And to sum it up, I had a date today. This dude has, like, I already knew he was kind of nutty because it's like, okay, sir, you know that your friend had gotten, like, into several fights with me and that they threatened a restraining order against me. And I'm self-aware about that. It was a very messy time. I was, like, 19 and losing my fucking shit over a dude and his supposed girl best friend that's do you know how many bad girl girl best friend stories i have yeah let's just say if you have one of those don't try to fucking date me don't try to date me at all actually like if you're still watching this video and you're like i should date her don't please save me save me not by trying to date me by trying to stay the far away from me and just be a friend in my life i need it i need to figure out how to be happy and have more platonic social bonds so that i can remember there's reasons to live for that don't exist within the realm of sex or romance please god god help me <sighs> but my date today 
this dude was friends with the ex I had when I was 19. And it's like, you mean to tell me that you're friends with this guy, but you followed, like, he, so it's been, like, so 19, so 20, 20, so, like, five fucking years, give or take. I'm not doing math right now. Shut up. Five fucking years, and you still want to get involved with me. Knowing that I made your friend's nosebleed and had him fucking shaking and terrified and stuff. You're not a good person already. But it's like, but I kind of knew that. But it's also like, hey, if he's the type of guy who's like, I still like to me and no matter fucking what. And I adore her. Then it's like, okay, you know what? I could use some people around me. And I guess if it's this dude who's just unapologetically like, I like this girl. She's the best person ever. Regardless, then I suppose I'll take it. Even though I'm judging. Now, to sum it up. Because it's getting dark and I have stuff I gotta do. I went to... I went somewhere, right. Oh yeah, I went to Ikea with him today. He was so fucking rude the whole time. Like, wouldn't open any doors for me. Walked far as fuck when he knew I was wearing high heels. Like, if we were going down the stairs and I was struggling to go down the stairs, he would, like, the gentleman thing to do is you grab a lady's hand and guide her and help her down the stairs. He, his ass was just, like, racing down those stairs with his long ass legs, leaving me fucking behind. And I was like, I had to physically tell him, like, hey, wait up. Like, twice during our hangout. He kept walking far as fuck, like, seven feet ahead and shit. In the middle of, like, it, it's like, sir, you're acting like you don't want to be here with me, which is ridiculous. And he was mumbling and hella rude and snarky. And even at some point, I was just grabbing some items that were on clearance. Super duper cheap shit. Like, we were there because he promised that he would buy me some candles from Ikea as a sweet little gesture. For, since my birthday passed. And this man, like... All I did was, like, gesture towards this lampshade I thought was cute and was, like, my favorite color, pussy pink. I gestured to it. I was like, oh, hey, that's kind of high up there. Is it possible you can, like, help me find an associate so that I can get this thing down? I really want to get it. His ass has selective hearing. He must have heard, get this for me, somehow. I don't know how the fuck he did it. He might be dyslexic. Sorry if that's a fucked up joke. We love dys dyslexic people. I almost said dyslexic. I might be dyslexic. Whatever. His ass, what I'm saying is, his immediate reaction was to be like, Ugh. I said, I'm going to you candles. I'm not getting you anything else but the candles. And that pissed me off because it's like, sir, I didn't ask you to get me fucking shit else. I did not ask a single goddamn thing out of you. Shut the fuck up. And that pissed me off because it's like, and also I was holding heavy ass shit. Because I was holding, like, some hangers that were, like, two bucks. The, uh, some motherfucking, um, uh, I was holding some shit. Like, the bundles of lavender that were, like, 99 cents. And I was holding them because quantity, bitch. I don't know what to tell you. And he wasn't bothering to help me hold a single fucking thing until I had to physically ask him. And it's just like, you know I like men with manners and decorum. You've seen me get online and rant about how I fucking hate men who don't open doors for me because if I'm wearing heels or carrying heavy shit or wearing a skimpy outfit and I try to open a door and I open it wrong I'm gonna fuck up my hand and then guess what when I did try to open the door myself to get into his car with that shit in my arms I fucked up my fucking hand <laughs> twisted my wrist around I don't even know how I did that but it happens I closed the door on myself awkward shit happens and it's just like I don't know it's like how do you know what I hate and you did every fucking thing wrong I even told him before the meetup that I, part of my autism is that I'm sensitive to bad smells. And the whole time as we were in the store, I was like, what the fuck is this smell? Does everyone in here smell like ass? But then we got into his car to go back to my place to like drop off the shit. And I was like, holy shit, it's him. He smells like actual dog water, like dog shit and piss shaking around in a jar. Just left in the sun to rot for several days. It was horrific. And I just thought to myself, wow, you really... Like, if you're gonna be someone who's obsessed with me, can you at least get what I fucking like right? It's not that hard. Really. Like, with the social media guy, he could have easily... He was cocky as fuck, and he was narcissistic. But really, he could have just been like, huh, this chick is online ranting and having breakdowns and crying about how her friends aren't being supportive people for her or checking in on her and she needs to get checked in on. I'm going to absolutely follow in their footsteps. Or, so like, uh... And guess what? My date today, the guy after social media guy, the guy who smelled like dog shit at Ikea. Ikea guy, basically, on the way home, he could tell I was being quiet. 
and he was warming up to me like his he was just like all sunshine and daisies now <clears throat> he also wasn't asking shit about me until he noticed i was quiet then suddenly he wanted to put in tons of effort and start being all happy-go-lucky and shit I still was being cold, or at the very least lukewarm, and he just tried to, he tried his best, and he was like, just so you know, it takes me a while to warm up to a person, I just thought to myself, that doesn't change a fucking thing. He said rude shit to me outside of the whole buying that thing. It's just like, fuck, dude, you could have left me the fuck alone, and I really allowed myself, like, the only reason I went on a date with him was because it's like he's been here f around for five years. I figured I'd be comfortable with him. I wasn't going to be nervous around him. Ugh. I'm just, it's like, you know what? If someone who has been around for like three to five years and actively lurking my social media pages and watching that my stories whenever they get the chance, almost every day, and they still manage to fuck up a date with me, then who has a fucking chance, really? Because y'all niggas will just, it's like, how do you fail an open note test, really? So, yeah, that it's like everyone's just showing me that I really do need to focus on myself and stop dating and stop giving anyone else attention but myself. But on the bright side, I still looked great today. I still was moisturized, had fun. Well, mainly because I had fun getting ready and I had fun talking shit later when I got home. But, yeah. Mm. Dating is the trenches, but I'm doing well and not dating so far because, or at least not planning to actively because... At this point, the idea of going on a date stresses me out. It's like, oh, I'd have to comb out my afro. I'd have to shave my legs. Do like I. It's like I put in so much effort today to smell like fucking coconut and roses, and have the perfect color coordinated layered scent, like juicy afro, perfect lip gloss, like beautiful outfit and look and style and grace and eloquence. All for a dude who didn't care that he smelled like shit, looked like shit, and was rude as fuck for his first impression. Like what the fuck. Huh, anyway, I think that's all I gotta say, but yeah, dating is the trenches right now. And let's just be glad that I'm not at war with myself, and I'm not at war with these niggas anymore, and that I am self-aware that I am way too insane to be dating. I even told myself the next time you go on- I, bet I finally hit the rock bottom point where I actually just full-on hate men. Not every single man, but almost every single man. I just expect the worst from y'all. So now it's at the point where it's like, okay- if someone's like, hey, Tamia, what about me? Do you want to give me a chance? I'm going to say, I am a gold-digging harpy. No. No, I'm a gold-digging harpy. Just in case they want to be all stingy and shit. It's like, I am a gold-digging harpy. Because guess what? I wasn't a gold-digging harpy today, and a guy still was going to accuse me of being one anyway, so I might as well fucking be one. Like, just, there's layers to this shit, and he's not, people piss me off. Anyway, bye. Mm.